I'm doing nursery work this morning in the form of taking and processing softwood cuttings and getting them into a system for propagation. And I thought it would be a nice opportunity to show where those softwood cuttings go and how they integrate into a living ecosystem that we've set up. So stick with us while we talk about integrate rather than segregate, which is a really lovely permaculture principle. Last summer we trialed putting together a very simple pond on an old concrete pad where a garage used to be, a small shed used to be in the backyard. This is made out of dumpstered cinder blocks and old greenhouse poly. And last summer I documented in greater detail how we assembled this, why it cost zero dollars to build a uh, 100 to 200 gallon little mini pond for frogs and fish. And what we're realizing is this is valuable on so many levels. The first and almost most important level is if you look closely you can see how many frogs are enjoying this. Sorry for all the bird noise, but this is a crazy little ecosystem back here. It's been droughty for the last few weeks and the frogs that have enjoyed the hand-dug natural ponds that we have in the landscape, they needed a place to take a break while it dried out. And here they are. They're enjoying this space. So again, cinder blocks laid up to be relatively level. Greenhouse plastic laid in to hold the water. It's as simple as that to make the water holding aspect. To make the bubbler was about 50, oh, let's say 60, 70 dollars. I'll link in the description. It's an eight port bubbler. It draws about 12 watts. And there's a reason I went for eight ports. I've got a bunch of different areas I'm trying to aerate concurrently. Let me show you. This pond feature has four bubbler points in it. In each of the corners, there is a tube that's run with an air stone. That's creating a really fine aeration. Feels like the frogs truly enjoy it. We've got a few fish in there and they spend a fair bit of time next to them as well. Two of the ports run out to our aerobic compost tea. Right now we've got worm castings with blackstrap molasses uh, in the main vessel and chopped up comfrey being aerated in that bucket with holes in the bottom so it can leach out the nutrient. And then two more of the bubblers are coming over to our little softwood propagation tank, which I'm slowly filling this morning. In this case, what you're looking at is, it's a one gallon pot with a rock in the bottom to keep it from floating around. And I have softwood cuttings very loosely processed without sterile tools, just with my fingers uh, peeling the leaves off. We've got seaberry with Koryanagi willow. The theory that I've been working with, and it feels functional, is that when I take softwood cuttings of hard to root plants, so sea berry, autumn olive, gumi, um, things like that, if I add willow to actively root alongside them, the willow exudes the compounds that help stimulate rooting. The willow roots almost immediately, within a week or so, and that supports the sea berry to do its rooting. The last round of this, which was about two weeks in the container, is a mix of grapes, elderberry, sea berry, and willow. And the willow rooted just about right away, three, four days. And now I've planted them all out since they started pushing roots in the bubbling water. And they've got a little protection from the heat of midday sun in the form of a little table with a sheet that can fold down and they'll continue to root on for the rest of the season. Taking a step further into the realm of integrating components rather than keeping them all isolated, I figure, well, this, this pond space, which is now in service for the frogs and for a few fish bopping around, you can see a fish back in there doing its thing. Um, I thought, well, we've got aerated and healthy living water in this space and the frogs enjoy various things happening, a little more diversity in the water, vegetation, and the like. So I laid in some bricks and put a piece of shale over the bricks. So now there's another space for the fish to hide or the frogs to go under. And I put those same containers with the rocks. And in this one, I have gumi. 
pretty loosely processed. This just went in this morning. It's not going to have any roots at all. Gumi is very, very slow to root. <clears throat> Last year in this system of aerated water, we had uh, about 30 to 40 percent success rate. I'd like to see higher, but I'm fine with that. That's still pretty good. So if we get seven gumi plants from this one pot sitting here that frogs can swim in between, they'll even go inside these sometimes. They like to go and tuck in and be in the thicket of it all. But there's enough room on this piece of slate to go with about 10 more containers. So we can probably put about 300 cuttings rooting in this aerated, healthy uh, faux pond ecosystem, all while the, the frogs can rest and reproduce. A lot of times they just sit there mating with each other for hours on end. Some of them take high dives off that cinder block on the far end there. So this is a really lovely little mini ecosystem here, and it can also be helping to promote the rooting of incredibly high-value plants for our nursery. Why not? Yesterday I took a number of softwood cuttings of some high-value beings from our landscape. There's male hardy kiwi, which should root pretty readily in this system. Titan seaberry, put on so much growth this year that we can get lots and lots of cuttings from them. There's some clove currants down in there, which have been hard for me to root from hardwood, so I'm going to try softwood. We got about 30% success with them last year. And then cultivar gojis, which root at about 118%. So those, it's kind of nice to throw in once in a while plants that are so easy to root that it feels like you know what you're doing. <laughs> and again, you can see, I, I just want to dispel the myth for folks that have looked up videos on how to propagate by softwood cuttings and you found people wearing latex gloves and having spray bottles of alcohol and sterilizing everything and razor blades to cut you can do that, that's fine. But you can also use the pruning shears that you wipe off on your pants and some scissors that you wiped off on your shirt on a table outside. And maybe you'll get 80% instead of 100%, or you'll get 60 instead of 80%. You're still getting plants. And so long as the, the spaces that you're working with are vital and healthy, and you're not uh, promoting nasty bacteria by sterilizing everything all the time, there's good airflow, there's good sunlight, there's healthy, clean, natural water, these plants want to root. Feels like it's gonna actually rain today, so I should shush up on this video and actually get back to work. Get the softwood cuttings processed and resting in our little mini summer pond, as well as our full sun bubbler that's more for the sea berry which needs the sun in order to root and hopefully these frogs will get enough rain today that they can migrate back to the other ponds and enjoy a more natural space but for now we're really happy to see them here having a little break from what has been a turbulent summer and they're so welcome in our landscape thanks frogs for being here we look forward to hopefully seeing some of your babies and maybe they can rest under the leaves of the plants that rooted in the very pond you enjoyed this summer. Integrate rather than segregate. It's a really lovely permaculture principle and I feel like it's really functional. Thanks for watching.